49 users now. Let's skip to the next day. Bang. We were 26 active users. Man, a lot of people lost interest. They've sold 88 units. That's actually really bad. They've made uh, $225 because it's a really cheap game. Remember, it's three bucks a pop. So they haven't really made very much here. And they spent uh, basically $11,000 during development. Ooh. So they may or may not be around for a very long time. They might get bought out by a different company or they may have to liquidate or just go bankrupt or something like that. But we have a decent amount of money here. So let's go for building a... Let's go for building a little more here. Let's just go um, construct another another room. It'll be an adjacent room. That's fine. Is that right? 2.5. I think that's right. And then take this. Select every not the entire building. Select everything in the room. Select furniture and selected rooms. There we go. Duplicate. And just bring it on over. There we go. I don't think. Uh, did those get carried over too? Oh good. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's like just off a little bit. Especially if you mess with the grid size. Sometimes things get a little off-centered. That's cool. So we've just copied over thing there. So it is a cut and copy thing. Oh, the vent didn't copy over. Okay, so we got to get one of those. That's what this is blown up about. In a very line. There's no way to get into it. We need doors or elevators. Yes, take an elevator to your office on the first floor. Best way to do it. Cubicle wall. Oh, hey. Cubicle walls. Man. Man. Work boost for marketing. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at all that stuff. Well, we'll have to play around with that when we get bigger offices, but right now we're just a small little company. So, uh, we don't get any of that cool stuff. Oops, I meant for control. Remove that. Yep. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> and they just need the event. So we'll throw that. Oh my god, actually that's a good question. Where do we throw that? Because I can't put it here and see about an exterior wall. So I guess it'd have to be... It'd have to be over here. And we need the door still, right. I knew that. There we go. <clears throat> They're a bit flipped, but yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Actually, I think, uh, I think that door's backwards. Oh, well. It doesn't bother me. So in order to get a second person though, not only do we have to go through the whole recruitment type thing and finding them and, and looking for them and finding the right fit for our company, but they also have needs, unlike our guy. They're not as cheaty as we are. So they actually need, um, you know, lighting, an example. They need things like bathrooms. Oh god, what a pain. But it's okay, they're not that expensive. So we'll throw one of those together real quick. And we also need a meeting room. So take out door here. Let's go, can I just, uh, I don't want to destroy room. Merge rooms, okay, cool, nice. So now it's a, actually a pretty large hallway. So. I know it, I know that. Okay, you can't have rooms inside rooms still. So what we'd have to do is make this, um, well, we probably just at this point have to delete the room. Oh, uh, okay. Well, let's go for the double door then, I guess. There we go. Nice big double door. Totally unnecessary. Um, I guess we could go for... I was thinking meeting room over here, so bathroom at the end of the hall, I guess. It's certainly not ideal, but we have a... <laughs> Actually reminds me a lot of where I used to work. A sort of meeting room slash break room type combination thing. It'll be the first down here, right? And then we have a small bathroom just past that. The water cooler just outside, which would be a bit awkward because people will just like be hanging out around the bathroom a lot. Probably not ideal, also because the meeting room is right there. 
Offices are right here, so people chit-chatting out here might be a little too loud. I don't know, but then we got the hallway curving around. I might have this eventually U around, so we'll have more offices um, here. We'll actually probably be on this side. So the windows will sort of, the windows will be like facing each other, so they'll just like be looking into somebody else's office. But we could do some sort of like a nice outside garden type thing, I think, maybe outside somewhere, you know, like fence it up and, I don't know, some some things and stuff. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But I'm thinking like you this around, so it'd be sort of a horseshoe shape. Windows on this side, nice park area, maybe an elevator at the end of the hallway or something. I don't know. But eventually when I get a little more money, uh, we'll be moving the break room into a more proper spot. Second bathroom. Wheel this around. More offices. Yeah, we'll go for that. So with that done, that took a pretty good amount of time. With that done, I think... I think we'll bang out another contract, or maybe two. Do another game assets, because we're pretty good at that. And uh, I'll just start doing this until he shows up. If we get a little more money from this, though, I'm thinking we'll uh, we'll go for hiring. Oh God, what have I done? What have I done? Ah, oh, oh, big one. Whew. Uh, there, there, there we go. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, like single-handedly doing this project, man. Uh, shit, there we go, there's a one. Quick. Loop them together. Ah, uh, the threes are gonna hit. Quick. We did it. <laughs> Typing minigame. You don't do this for very long, it's usually just the first few contracts. I mean, you can do this for like the big projects, but you'd be doing it for a good long while before you can really make any dent in it. We're case, array, union, almost there, break, else, break again, else again, case again, long, serialization, break, again. Cool. Go to almost got it. Oh, I fucked up apparently. Okay, yeah, we got it. Promote it. And then it goes into delay and then beta for the bug fixing. And there is no mini game for this. So you have to have your team doing this, which I kind of like because that means that you can't just single handedly pound out through the mini games and do. Massive projects that way you do have to rely on the team for at least some form of it Go my guy technically doesn't need this stuff, but that doesn't mean he won't eat it from time to time Or eat it no drink it and eat it Yeah, this reminds me a lot of the break room type thing that we had at work. It was actually a really big long table And that's where they would do the um the meetings and stuff like that, we had some small shitty TV off in the, the far side there. Oh, yeah, release. Got it. Woohoo! Uh... Yeah, let's go for higher employees here. Okay, so let's pause it. I don't really need a leader yet. Team leaders are a fantastic thing later on, as well as marketers. Later on. I don't need it. So basically, we can either get somebody who's similar to me and really excel at art, or I pick up somebody who's good at programming, pick up my weaknesses. Or I can also just stay solo and I can educate myself. The longer I assign myself, one, two, or three months, the longer I do it, the more it costs, but the better I get in a particular area. So I could train myself in uh, art and specifically audio art. I mean, three months for that is definitely overkill, but that would cap it off. If I was actually going to be doing this, I'd probably be doing some form of uh, programming for the code and I'd probably 2D or something. Probably just like a month, 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 something like that, just to round myself out a little bit, but I'm not going to bother doing that. We will, though, look for somebody who does programming. Ideally, 2D programming, I suppose. So, programmer, specialization, 2D, that's fine. Salary, the higher the salary I offer, the better choices we get and all that. We'll just go for 3000 pretty decent. We'll interview them to reveal their overall skill. And I'd like to know their personality. 
And specialization. I don't really care about specialization much. Just overall skill, really. As long as you get a program, it doesn't have to be 2D. And uh, we'll bump uh, $1,200 into the process there. So we see compatibility with me because I did a personality interview type thing. So we know what their, their basics are like there. So because he's a hard worker, he's somewhat independent, and he's a little bit lazy, it's good compatibility with me. He's cocky and stubborn. Or we got uh, Derek Houston, who's basically the same. Ooh, good there. You're incredibly social. Not terribly lazy. Somewhat of a fast learner. Hmm, and skill 30, uh, 33. Let's start by skill. That's the highest we got. 42.99. Derek Fowler. Normal compatibility. Hmm. I'm going to go for the good compatibility. That actually makes a pretty big difference. And let's open up this. Why not? $100 just to see their specialization. Not precisely 2D, but that's fine. I just need somebody who's good at programming. And we'll put him in for the core team. So, hire. Uh, limited funds. He's like, whoa, watch out, but it's cool. Uh, we'll just do contracts and pay for him. So we got Derek Fowler here. Yeah, you're really good. Normal compatibility, though. Mm -hmm. He's an introvert and mean. What an asshole. Okay. So we'll rock a two-person team for a little while there. And yeah, manage employees. Barbara Cameron. Barbara Cameron, can I rename you? Doesn't look like I can. If I can, I'd like to know. Oh well. Ideal salary is the thing that occurs, especially when you start training people up, or if they're in a particularly bad mood because of the situation they're working in, whether it's um, there's no like meeting room, so they, they feel they feel really isolated. She's very social, so she'll definitely be set off by uh, feeling isolated, but Stuff like that, they'll sort of demand a raise, and um, that's what the ideal salary is all about. So she'll be in tomorrow, I presume, so it's just me for now for today. So let's do some more contract work, because why not? This is all basic stuff, command line work, sure, why not? Uh, but it's not competent in design, might delay and add errors. She's not even here. It's fine. I guess I'll do the mini game, really don't have to. Look at this, is already getting up there. He's he's already got it. Don't even need me. You barely have to do anything for that. They just wanted something pumped out. I can help flow uh public go to Okay, we got it. <laughs> That's a really easy one to do. Best contract ever. One month left, fix zero bugs. Yeah, you're not doing anything. Okay, so we'll just finish it up there. Let's go for another one, too. Why not? We don't have many hours left in the day, but look at that. The bar's right there. Bam. Throw it in development. Bang. Delay. Into beta. Release it. Quick and easy $10,000 with like two hours of work. So fucking whatever. <laughs> and notice there's a little bit of dirt here. There is maintenance and stuff like that to do. The more I use a computer and the fridges and stuff like that, the state decreases, which reduces the efficiency of it and effectiveness of it and can really put a hamper on certain projects. So that is why you would have a uh, maintenance person come in and repair things. Um, I think maintenance would be doing like things like fridges, the water cooler, the lighting and stuff like that. When it breaks down, it gets a little shitty. IT support is specifically, I think, the computers and servers and all that jazz. Higher cleaning would be the carpet stuff. It's $1,000 per month to do it, though, so... I mean, obviously, I don't have that kind of money, but I can do a temporary service. I can't do a temporary receptionist, but that's fine. Um, so if, like, my computers are getting a little run down, I would just do a temporary IT support. It's $100 to repair. No problem. Or the carpets are looking a little shit, so we'll just go, oh, call cleaning, whatever. They'll be here in uh, 15 to 12. Okay, so they'll be here, like, overnight, it looks like. That's fine. They'll just come in and clean up the carpet real quick. There's no, not much to do. And there they are. Going to clean a room, looking for them to clean, going to clean room. I guess it's all like really basic stuff. Going home. Yeah. Easy. My place isn't nearly big enough to need a uh, a dedicated worker to come in daily and all that. So we'll just be doing the temporary for a good long while. What are we doing with the market now? Because with our second person, I think I might... I might get a little more money, get a third person. And see about doing software of our own. None of this contract bullshit, you know? Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. All software, let's pause this real quick. Take a look at this real fast. The most recent stuff to have come out. Ooh, Curse Rebirth, an RPG game. Mediocre quality, they sort of pumped it out. 20 bucks for it. They spent $100,000 throughout development on it. Oof, and they want $2 million to buy it. They're, they got some high hopes on that. Basically, they're probably in debt. Macro Spin Blade. Let's get the details on uh, Find Owner. Yeah, Macro Spin Blade. They have a lot of worth, a lot of fans. So that'll probably actually be a really good game. Three point, basically 4 million fans of the company who are just like, we will do anything you want, basically. So that's just shitloads of hype just by doing anything, really. They got a lot of money. I don't think they're in, uh, they are in no way about to be bankrupt. They just don't want to sell me their game is all that is. They're pumping out the games, though. This is like the Bethesda. Actually, they do a lot of RTS, RPG. Hmm. God, could you imagine? The City Camp in Heaven, the real-time strategy game in 1973. Nobody's really buying it. Uh, if I wanted to buy it, it'd be five, five million dollars to buy it. But I mean, I could, I could effectively, I could buy the City Camp in Heaven. There was already a sequel to it, but I could make a, um, a sequel to the sequel so I could make a City Camp in Heaven 3, and it would by default just have a shitload of hype because it's a sequel to what I'm presuming was a pretty good game. They sold half a million units. They grossed $16 million on it. I mean, <laughs> if, if I made a third, that'd probably be a pretty cool thing. So I could trade IP, buy it out, and try to do a sequel. That kind of thing. I mean, you can do, you can do whatever you want with it. You can just buy it out and just keep it and hang on to it so nobody can make a sequel off it. Local multiplayer, AI, music, and text base. Damn. 1973? Fucking hell, that'd be amazing. Text based with music, man, that alone would be awesome. With AI too, though? Jeez. So this is the game that, like, invented mobs, mobile objects, then, I suppose, in the realm of, of my world here. Baby Tycoon? Wait, what? <sighs> What's this? I got so many windows open. What is Baby Tycoon? Yeah, okay. It was around for two months before the sales dropped significantly. Nobody's playing it anymore. Sold 70,000 units. Probably, probably the type of thing where a lot of people bought it straight away because it was a reputable company who was good with games and uh, it got really bad reviews or something like that. So we've got the software times that sort of reviews projects and stuff like that and uh, probably just killed the sales then. Either that or they put it out at a really bad time. If you put it out for an operating system that's about to go obsolete, that'll do it to you too. Hmm. Anyway, enough of that. It's uh, surprisingly deep, like I said, and I love it for that. Oh, those aren't my people. Oh, wait, it's like nighttime, closing time. Let's just skip ahead to the next day here.